Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's episode, powered by Hayabusa, is all about shutting down low kicks, evading them, stopping them, and making sure your opponent doesn't attack your legs. In today's episode, we're going to discuss six different ways you can shut down your opponent's low kicks. And let's get right into the first one. The first one is evading, slipping, and countering the kick. And to, in order to do that, you need to have good understanding of distance control. When you're in a fight, you gotta understand punch range is slightly different than kick range. And especially when you're in a fight, most people like to set up their low kicks with punches. So if you're just outside of punch range, it means your leg might still be there for your opponent to hit. That's why you need to gauge, maybe play with distance deception a little bit. Leave your leg there, leave your leg there, then pull it away quickly and be able to counter. Slipping the low kick and countering with your punches or countering with another kick is a good way to shut your opponent's low kicks down. If they're at risk of getting hit every time they throw the low kick, this is where you wanna take advantage. So playing with that distance control is very important. Especially a good low kicker, ideally they wanna use the top of their shin, high shin to create as much damage on your leg as possible. So even if you do slip out and you're just not enough, at least your opponent hits their instep on your leg and they're not landing with their shin. So ultimately you're taking away some power from the kick and some of that damage by evading it. But remember, if you're gonna evade, don't evade too far away, this way you can counter back. If you slip too far, your counters are out of the way, then you're lunging in, and then you can get hit with a counter shot yourself. So just slipping and being able to counter back is the first way of shutting down your opponent's low kicks. The second way to shut down your opponent's low kick is understanding turning and moving of your opponent. If your opponent is attacking with low kicks, you have to understand which way are you circling. A good low kicker is gonna circle you into their low kicks, especially if they have a good left hook. Throwing those left hooks forces you to go to this way, bang, and then you can chop the legs. So understanding movement and turning is really important in avoiding low kicks and getting hit with them. So ultimately, you wanna circle away from the power, and that's the key. So whether I'm fighting a southpaw or an orthodox fighter, whatever way the kick is coming, you want to circle away from the power side. This way, you're not taking the blunt force trauma of that kick. So, circle away. So if I'm fighting a low kicker and they keep hitting my leg, by circling to the right, at least it's gonna take away some power and if it does hit, you're all right as well. Especially circling away from that power puts you in a nice position to be able to slam some good power punches. So, make sure you understand the way you circle as well as your distance control. The third way of blocking and shutting down low kicks is the most obvious, block the low kick. Too many times we sit there and we take the shot thinking it's not gonna hurt. A good low kick is an investment. You start early and you keep building. You keep banking on it until the end of the fight. If you look at back at my career, in the first round, maybe my low kicks weren't doing as much physical damage and my opponents weren't buckling, but the second, the third round, you start seeing that damage build up and then this is where I was able to finish either with my head kicks or get aggressive with my boxing. The focus on my opponent is too much on their lead leg, it lets me attack in different areas. So. Blocking it is number one. I've always talked about so many different ways to block it, but it's very simple. If I lift my leg straight up, it's really for my, easy for my opponent to still hit my leg. The key to blocking a calf kick or a low kick in the fastest, most simplest way is turning my toes out on a 45 degree angle. By turning my toes out, it allows me to block with the hard part of my shin. By keeping my toes pointing forward, if the calf kick is still there and still hitting below uh, the knee or the quad is still available. So by turning my toes out, automatically I block in a good position and I'm blocking with the hard part of my shin. You can actually do damage by blocking a kick. Especially if someone's throwing a low kick and I turn my foot out slightly, it lets me block at a further distance. And if I can catch the top of my shin on my opponent's instep, they're gonna really think twice about throwing that kick. So my block can actually be a damaging strike. The fourth way to be able to shut down your opponent's low kicks is your rear straight. And this is the one you like to see a lot. You almost bait your opponent in. I'll leave my leg there, leave my leg there. As soon as my opponent goes to throw that low kick, that rear straight beats them right down the middle. A lot of times when people throw their low kicks, they tend to keep their head on center line. By sitting there waiting and anticipating it, you could really beat them 
to the strike and at that point it's just gonna slow them down. If every time they throw that kick, they're getting met with a nice rear straight, they're definitely gonna think twice about throwing it and you're gonna throw some damage. Especially when you're kicking, there's moments where you're on one leg and when you're on one leg, if someone pressures you back, you're able to get knocked down, fall backwards, it doesn't look favorable for the judges. So, make sure when you do throw your low kicks, okay, that's why you set them up. You don't want your opponent to sit there and drive that rear straight. So, to avoid them and avoid your opponent from hitting you with them, you gotta beat them with that rear straight. Knock them backwards, make them, the best way to say it is punish them for throwing that kick. The fifth way you can shut down low kicks, as I just mentioned, is through pressure. As soon as I stay close to my opponent, it's really difficult for them to throw a kick. And it's back to the understanding of ranges. If I sit in a kick range, which is a little further out, it's allowing my opponent to kick and move, kick and move. But ideally, if I keep pressing them, keeping them against the ropes, they really can't throw their low kicks at that point. Especially with their backs against the ropes, if they want to throw, they're leaning backwards. It just exposes their chin, and I'm able to get in good do work. So, make sure when you do, pressure, you stay defensive and you're able to block and counter right away. That's the beautiful part of pressure, jamming that distance, taking your opponent, especially the kicker, out of their comfort zone. So get in there, pressure them, just be careful. A lot of guys with good low kicks, if they mix up a good knee up the middle, you can be in trouble. So just understand the range and which strikes are valuable in rich range. So if I'm fighting a good low kicker and I'm pressuring with my hands, you just need to be worried those knees coming up the middle, okay? Kick fighting is Something that you need to be aware of because the knees are all part of this understanding of the fighting with the legs. The sixth and final way to avoid low kicks is understanding how to switch stances. If my opponent keeps attacking my outside of my leg as an orthodox, I might switch stances to a southpaw. So by going southpaw, now my opponent has to attack the inside of my leg, which is a little bit more risky, especially if I'm bladed in my stance, my opponent's at more risk of hitting the inside of my leg. So by understanding switching stances, changing the distance away, as well as giving different targets will shut down your opponent's low kicks. It's just the trickiness. So by understanding and putting it all together, that's how you can really shut down the low kicks. There is no one way to do it. It's nice to mix up these different six, okay? Quick recap for you to end this video off. It's really about understanding of distance control. If someone is attacking you with low kicks, you need to be aware of that range and distance. That's why kickboxing is a little bit different than boxing. In boxing, you can sit and move and evade at a closer range. But with kicks, it's a longer weapon. You need to stay further away. So understanding that range is really important. And if you do get hit, it's okay. Practice the different strategies. Circle away from the power. Move in and out. Meet them with the rear straight change stances, all these different strategies are gonna help you, one, confuse your opponent on different timings on how they can throw the low kick, but ultimately, you're stopping the damage from happening and being able to follow with your game plan, and that's the key. So, make sure you keep liking and subscribing to Bazooka Kickboxing, hit the notification bell to stay up to date, and make sure you keep supporting our sponsors, Hayabusa, and go to their website, hayabusafight.com, and check out their T3 boxing gloves, as they're one of my favorites with their knuckle and wrist protection. Okay, and make sure you check out the link below if you want quick access to those gloves, and check out bazookashop.com if you like any of the merchandise and gear that I'm rocking in these videos. We'll see you next week here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA.